Hey, Paula. Hola, darling. Hey. I'm here with Mo. Say hi, Mo. What's going on, dear? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm, this is your first Power Talk. I'm so excited to have you I, on Listen, here. thank you so much for having me. As soon as I, when I got the DM, I was like doing a little dance. Yes. It's always a good time, a time to talk, a time to kind of talk about how community becomes a part of how we, you know, give and create um, all these different things, art avenues, from poetry to theater, mm -hmm. to just regular community events, right? That calls yes. us like fellowship. So my first question always is, I love where do we word. find you in community? Um, I love so that word, fellowship, media. by the way. That's love. You, you're yeah. bringing out my church kid. All right. So Period. you can find me on TikTok and Instagram, M-O, the underscore, le the letter B, underscore outside. And uh, in the link of my bio, you can find all of the direct links to anything on my list and some extras, including my podcast, which is called The Pregame, uh, also on YouTube. So, Ooh. yes. The Pregame. I want to know, what, what, how did that come about? The Pregame podcast. Okay. So I want to, it's a specific shout out to my friend, Ricky Codio. He and I were having coffee and we're chatting. And I was like, I think it'd be really dope to interview people before an, before an event, especially mm -hmm. since Philadelphia is so full of creatives. There's always something new. There's a new perspective. There might be somebody new on the scene and you want to go to the thing, but you're like, am I going to spend the money on the ticket? What are the vibes? Mm -hmm. Am I driving all the way across town? Right. And so um, the emphasis behind the pregame is just that. Right. So like more than what's on the website. What are the vibes? What am I wearing? Um, is this my community, right? Because I think once you are talking mm -hmm. to a curator, you really can connect and sort of see if they are part of your tribe or not. Um, so I've been doing that for about seven months now. Yeah. Yes, come through. Mm -hmm. When you talk that, when you said, is this my community? Yes. I think that's a question that, you know, a lot of people think is just like an afterthought. It's like, of course, it's my community. But right. no, like, is this my community? And the fact that you you're talking to curators to be like, hey, who gonna be who all gonna be there? And you know, and that's like ready. that's the first question always. <laughs> who all gonna be there? Like, <laughs> I gotta I gotta do something else. I got an adult and go to this thing, and I, you know, may or may not need to change an outfit. Like, let me know. You know, what's the vibe? Know. Like, am right. I dressing up? You know what I'm saying? I always ask exactly. the kids gonna be there. Is it a family thing? You know, is it a friendly thing for me to just, you know, be chilling? And I think right. that that's important because in our, in our community, we have smaller communities where, that want to hang out together um, yes. rather than the big barbecue. We don't all want to come to the big barbecue all the time. We like, listen. Exactly. And I believe in protecting those communities, right? And so I think mm -hmm. that we've all have felt that that other feeling. Like, I'm not really supposed to be here, but I showed up anyway. And if there's anything that I can do to support my community as well as the curator's you know, yeah. I do what I can. So t talk to about, tell us about um, an example of an event where you went and you were like, this is, I should have had Mo tell me before I got here what was going to go down. So um, I often bundle a lot of my events, right? So like mm -hmm. if I'm outside, I'm outside for the day. So I'll yes. hit one spot and then I'll, you know, grab a bite to eat or something. Then I'll meet a friend somewhere else and then I'll go somewhere else. Mm. So the day lent itself to business attire. I went from yes. work to a networking event to like cocktails with a good friend. I had on, you know, a dress, heels. It was on. It was mm. on. And then I went to an event that was more like a kickback. So I looked like everybody's favorite auntie. Like it was awful. <laughs> like, you were like, yo. It you're like, she work. did she work here? Like, it was awful. <laughs> I had a good time. But at the same time, I wish I had put some sneakers in the backseat or opted for slacks and changed into mm. a t-shirt type situation. So oftentimes, if I'm out, right, I, the attire has to match for the for the whole day. And it was one of those, oh, I'm going to network after work. Then I'm going to do this. I'm gonna... Awful. Awful. I look like everybody's auntie. <laughs> It was awful. <laughs> I'm sure they was like, you still look fly. They were still was like, I mean, is, is but, you don't want to. They were like, oh, but like, it also gives you, when you're not matching the vibe, it also makes mm. you feel like stuffy, right? They're like unapproachable. And like, that's not me. And so like, there was that. I mean, I pushed through the thing, but. Yeah. 
Can you talk about, have you, you know, how, have you curated a community events for yourself, you know, on your own um, and set the vibe? Like, I feel like it's important. Like, you can look at other curators and be like, yeah, hey, yeah, this is nice. But sometimes I'll be walking around like, I would have done this a little differently. This would have been here. This would have been flowed this way. Um, I understand more, that completely. Can you talk more about those kind of events that you, you may have been a part of to curate? Sure. Um, so I actually have um, just launched a partnership with the Art of Mixology. It's called Well Crafted. Um, every first Wednesday, um, my good friend Lamont Darian and I throw a cocktail mixer. And the whole premise behind the thing is because we're talking about community, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm a woman of a certain age, which means that I can do all the things, right? <laughs> I can go mm -hmm. and put on my sneakers and sweat out my hair, right? And dance my behind off. At the same time, I can network. I can socialize, mm -hmm. right? And then I can also do black tie, right? Like I can do all the things. And Well Crafted is around our love for a really good cocktail. Like I, I am a true believer that I think good cocktails are should be a love language. Um, yeah. And <laughs> Lamont <laughs> shares that love with me. And so the whole premise behind the event is that we are the vibe, right? Um, we bring mm -hmm. the vibe to a space so we're bringing the space with great cocktails, beautiful people, and music at a level where you and I can have a conversation. Um, yeah. Because I think the art of conversation, and that's something that she and I talk about all the time, you go out and it's either it's you're in a restaurant, mm -hmm. right? Or you're in somewhere where the music is so loud, like you didn't really connect with your people. And so that is, uh, that is the latest event that I'm um, a part of the curation for. Yes. Like what I love is also the notion of black people love to throw a party. We also love to make it, it's like a way of care for us, uh, you know, because it goes ancestrally to, you know, we were always allowed to gather and to celebrate. So right. when we do be like, no, it gotta be perfect. You can't put that there. You know what I'm saying? If you mix in the Kool-Aid, if you're doing that, it needs to be a certain way or we gonna have an issue, you know? Right. Yes. Uh, but I, I love what you said about the notion of the art of, of conversation, mm -hmm. right? And I think, you know, sometimes we skip over the conversation because people get scared and there's anxiety and things like that. But can you talk more about that art of conversation? Yep. Yeah, the art of conversation is like so important. Can you talk more about like what that art of conversation means to you, right? What does that mean look like in um, facilitating these, these spaces? Understood. So I have to start with, I am from Virginia. Um, so yeah, I know no strangers. I could make paint laugh. Like that is when I go on vacation, I know all my Uber drivers, grandma's favorite recipe. Like we are homies. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for me, the art of conversation is actually having conversation, deep conversation with your people. Right. So mm -hmm. ha having somewhere where, you know, you can go and me and my good friends can sit and have a conversation, but also it means that I have the ability, I'm a transplant. Right. So I can go somewhere where I know I'm going to meet other people of like mind and I have no problem walking up to them and b then building additional community. Right. Or joining their community, hearing about their passion projects. Um, Philadelphia, like I said, is full of creatives, full of entrepreneurs and loves a hustler, loves a hustler. I've never met a Philadelphian, whether it be somebody that's from here or somebody that is um transplanted here who doesn't who has a day job or has multiple passion projects mm -hmm. or you know i've been taking pictures and i got a million pictures in the deck so i'm about to make a coffee table book like i love hearing about other people's passions so the art of conversation for me is beyond the what do you do mm, it's beyond on. that it's it's more of who are you today what are you excited about in this season how do you feel about, and there's always something going on, whether it be uh, world news, within the culture, you know, we could talk an hour about Cat Williams. So like, period. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you, I told this, this season of uh, Power Talks, so they was like, listen, we gotta keep it short. Cause I'm telling, we be having it on conversations for like hours. And I, and I I'm love like, it. I'm like, listen, because for me, I, I agree. The art of conversation goes beyond that, you know, what do you do? You know, right. how are you? It's no, and then we go fine. You know, I'm fine. It's no, it's no, it's uh, hey, no, I'm serious. Like, what was your right. day like? You know, exactly. what'd you do? You know, and also, 
not what 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 is it that you do? It's like what are you passionate about? What is like something that's on your your brain right now that you want to you know express somebody? Or I'm and always that how can I help you? How, how can, can I, I help you? Who do I know where I can say? Oh, I know somebody. Wait, and the the awesome thing about the art of conversation, and we're c- coming up on our fourth installment. But mm. I've been able to every single event talk to somebody and go, "Oh, you need to meet so women." Awesome. And I walk across the room and I pull somebody I know, and I and and they're shaking of hands. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that that is a seed of a blessing that is going to bless somebody on their passion, on their project, on something that they're working on. And like that to me is the art of conversation. Showing up as who you would like to be in six to nine months, right? On whatever you're working on and seeing what I can do. Because I may not be able to do nothing, but I might know a, a somebody or something. Come and they on. might, could you, you know what I mean? Like that to me is the art of con- conversation. That that my fears dropped on showing up who you want to be in six to nine months. Oh, 100%. I believe in that. That yes. right there, I think that is something that most people have struggling with today because we have so necessarily bothered with the present. And I'm like, no, who, I mean, you walk into a room, let them know this. I, I may not be the executive of this right now, but let me tell you something now you're going to treat me as if I'm such, right? A hundred percent. Like I, one of my mentors told me early on in my career as a brown a brown girl in a corporate space, like you have to show up like you're the CEO. Come on. You, you you might be the nothing, literally. You're the nothing. You're the associate to the associate. But like you have to walk into the room like you're the CEO and sit in the appropriate space, walk into the room, have on the appropriate clothing, shake hands, have business cards, do all the things as if. And so um, if anybody watching this, one, hit the follow button. Two, mm-hmm. take that and tell a friend. <laughs> yes, because it's important. I think yes. I was talking to a generation of um, young college students at Temple when I graduated. And they were talking, they were like, yeah. Well, sometimes we get tired of this whole, this is how you do auditions, this is how you walk in. I said, let me tell you something. The audition, how I was taught, is just the icing on the cake. How you walk mm-hmm. into that room and how you slate and be like, hello, my name is so-and-so. Exactly. Right? Yes. You present what you're about to do is really what you, you, you making the cake there because they know from the jump, she walked in and said, hi, my name is Sabrina Shifley and I'm here to do this for you. Right. And then immediately go into your piece. Ain't no way. I was like, you have to make sure that you are making all the time. You never know who's in the room. I what think that think sometimes in that argument, People are trying to say that they should they should feel my energy, right? Yeah, they yeah. should know because my energy is right, and and like it's not recognizing the people that aren't vibrating on that level, mm-hmm. right? They need facts, they need examples. Not to mention the people that knew that you were it before you entered the room. They need receipts, so mm-hmm. then when they are going about to you for you with with their colleagues, they can say, for example, right? Because like, that's what happens whenever you have a close friend, a friend Mm -hmm. of a friend, you're like, oh, we're gonna bring them to this organization. And then they show up to the Zoom late with a crush t-shirt, like, and you're like, no. Try, try. (laughs) It's like, never again, (laughs) what I will put here, you know? Right. and, And what it is, is also, people don't understand what harm that brings to community and to relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So you start, you know, you want to bring, and you want to recommend your friend, but the back of your head, it's like, I hope she's not late. Like you said, I hope she's not late. I hope, you know, when she comes in, she she rocks this out, right? Yes. And for me, I I always had that backbone of like, my mom, you know, your mom used to say, don't go in here embarrassing me, right? And so whenever that happens, someone says, hey, Sabrina, I want to put you on for this audition or put you on for this job. My mentors have never, if they had other mentees, they were like, that one I'm never recommend again. But they knew if they put Sabrina on the list, oh, don't worry. I'll have my stuff sent in the morning. Don't worry. Thank you for the exactly. email. That to me is it's knowing how to connect, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. How do you connect and stay in connection? But also, how do you keep your vibration at the level, because the, you say some people don't read energy and we assume everyone reads the energy in the room. It's like, no, not everyone is attuned to what's happening in the space. 
I think one of the things, so um, about my social media journey, right? I started on TikTok. And one of the yeah. things that TikTok taught me, hashtag <laughs> that, TikTok. Um, is that what is, we talk about community and culture, right? But we forget sometimes that our communication style and the way that things, the way that we present things don't transcend other cultures and other communities, mm. even in America, right? And so like in the way that you and I are excited, right? So if somebody is watching this, they were like, are they arguing? No, we're excited, right? And so we're going back and forth and we automated and doing all the things. Mm -hmm. If you're not of the community and don't have the lens of the culture, then you're not going to, you're going to read all of the other things that are not there. And so that sort of also is a part of that conversation. Mm. Right. Your energy and your vibes and sort of whatever. But there's also, you know, there's that universal, no matter who made it, it's that universal situation. Right. But then there's also all of the other things that are contributing to the energy in the room. Yeah. And, uh, and recognizing that it's OK if you read the room wrong, but it's also room for you to adjust. Yes. In that, you know, and I think a lot of times we had a training one time when I was a program director. Uh, a gaming library in North Philly. And the training was this black woman came in and talked to us about because we were having differences in our executive mm -hmm. like in meetings. And they'd be like, she was like, you know, when Sabrina asks you a question, she's not questioning your authority. Do you know that? She's kind of questioning, you know, she's and and how and how you know black and brown bodies usually talk is through questions. It's through back and forth. It's like a ping pong. When you just say it, it's a ping pong. It is. And it's nothing personal. It's I'm confused on this. Hold on. Can you touch base on that? And what she explained is that, you know, sometimes we have, you know, those who may subscribe to white supremacy in the way of how you run a room um, are used to, if I say this, I'm going to talk until mm -hmm. I stop. And then you can ask a question. And meanwhile, black and, black and brown spaces, we like, yo, I could be talking and somebody jump in like, hold up. But you said that, you know, and we yes. can bounce with it because we are used to it. And when she said that, none of mine would click in their heads. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yo, Sabrina, so it helped me in these spaces where I'm in the boardroom now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let this person talk. I'm gonna let you talk until, and I keep, I'd be like, let, let them finish what they have to say, because mm -hmm. I know that person is going to feel like we are attacking them if we say, hey, you know, right. what's that about? Oh, oh, that's cool, I like that. And right. they're not used to that kind of talk, it's talking style. But uh, that adjustment, I think, is the pride that you let go of. of someone. Everyone has to understand what I'm saying. Um, I said this to a good friend, and I want to share it with you. Um, education worldwide is a billion-dollar energy with a B. It mm. is a billion-dollar industry. And none of it is based on comprehension. Come on. So you can get a degree from the top university and they are not invested if you understood anything. So as an individual, I would like to free anybody that hears this. <laughs> that is not your job. Mm -mm. Your job is to communicate clearly, answer questions, document if necessary, and keep it moving. That's it. That is your job. We Let only, go. Everybody don't need to understand. They don't. But, you know, it's the hard part. I, I, a friend yesterday I was talking to, and I was like, talking, I was like, you know, sometimes when people, you know, you're in a meeting and someone repeats what you just said, and oftentimes it's it's not one of our kinfolk who repeat what you just said, and you like, I'm sure I just said that. Clear, mm -hmm. you know? And I, and she, she was talking, she was like, and I was just like, what is going on? And I was like, <laughs> I said, they're repeating back to you because they can't comprehend what you're saying. That's not, right. that doesn't mean you weren't mm -hmm. clear. It just means that that person is trying to comprehend what's happening in the space, in the room. Mm -hmm. It's also a, a, a tactic. It's a tactic of, I don't understand. So I'll make you think that you don't understand what you mm -hmm. say. I jump out. Yes. It's like, no, I, 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 I'm I good. I'm cool. And how you say, you talk about the education system. I said, this is why when you have a group of students and you bring them out to talk and I, I tell my students all the time, I'll take them to see a show and after they'll beg to meet my friends who are the actors on the stage, and I'll be like, okay, but what, what you going to say when you meet them? And the person that comes out, dope. and my kids be like, that, that was dope, yeah. 
yeah. Oh, you did that. You did that. <laughs> yes. And I'd be like, do you have any questions? I forgot, Miss Abria, what my question was. And I'd be like, it's okay to, you know, mm -hmm. ask a question on the fly. This is a home in person talking to you. But they're right. in school, they're, they were like, Miss Abria, no one asks me if I understand what's happening. They they test me to say, listen, can you memorize what I just can said? Can you regurgitate you? it? Mm -hmm. And not do I understand? And I said that is crazy. Not even can you apply the thing that I just told you to do? Much less understand. Can you turn understanding into action? <laughs> and when they get a kid who can, or I, I remember this, you know, I had a friend who was very gift, what they call gifted, and mm -hmm. she would, but they would punish her because she would go and. She would not regurgitate. She'd be like, I'm going to say it this way. This is how I understand what you just did right there. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, no, no, no. Can you, what did I just say? And you know, she's like, I heard what you said. This is what it felt like to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a scary thing to witness when you see like a younger, you know, younger black woman come into the corporate world, come to the business and you, you're looking at her and you're like, baby, you don't got to repeat yourself. They understood what you were saying. And, right. and and being able to tell her that, but also being able to be a testimony and feel the trauma of it. Because you, you'd be like, mm -hmm. ah, I remember when I used to do that. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah, Yes, that's, uh, totally. So as we, like, we're about to wrap up, but I want to ask this important question because we talked okay. about energy, right? And we yes. talked about how energy manifests in us in our conversations. What, Mo, what makes you feel powerful? Oh, ooh. Uh, it's, what, yeah. Give me the feels. Wait, hold on. What makes me feel powerful? Um, what makes me feel powerful makes uh, I, when I feel grounded. Hmm. And yeah. I don't feel grounded all the time. I always I joke to my friends that I'm a little space cadet. I just be all over the place. Um, but I feel powerful when I'm grounded. Um, in whatever the thing is that I'm doing. Mm. So I could be baking. I could be at my nine to five. I could be Moby outside, which is my five to nine, right? I, when I am doing a thing that I am, and I am sort of in flow, that makes me feel so powerful. Um, and when I say in flow, I mean, it's a thing that I am doing without thinking about it. Mm. That mm. makes me feel so powerful um, mo because it feels like I've earned it, right? Like I've done the work, shadow work, education, I did the task. I did the work, right? Mm -hmm. To stand here and do the thing without thinking about it. Um, helping others makes me feel powerful um, because I am from a small town of Virginia, right? I My family, you know, came from nothing. And then, you know, my mother did a little bit better and I did a little bit better and one of those. But to help other people makes my entire day like it makes me beyond whether it's like volunteering or having conversations like this that can feel empowering um can you look over this thing sure can um and so that's why sort of with the platform that honestly grew very organically was not, i was did not get on tiktok to be an influencer a content creator i did not do that um so to help my city see the city the way that I see it. I mean, mm. let me tell you, Mo, you that statement about groundedness just evoked a series of power, of power in my spirit, like that yes. right there. Because I think we don't admit oftentimes as, as humans that, yeah, we are skating through life and we feel this, but the act of work to get grounded at all times, to be in the middle of a work day and to be like, okay, I need to stop this. I need to figure out where I am. Right. right. I need to take a moment. Yeah. yeah. And what does that mm -hmm. mean? And I think a lot of that's, and it's a blessing to recognize when you are a person who needs that groundedness. Cause there are so many people I, I, I see walking around, I would say who are just floating. And I'm like, baby, if you just came and down. Projecting. And, and projecting. And projecting. So we could be here for a whole I'm okay hour. With you. <laughs> I'm okay with the float. Sometimes right. we need to float. Go ahead, float. It's but the projector. Project. <laughs> it's like, hold on. You talking to me? Just, just float in silence. Just. Like, can you please? It's like, miss me. Go ahead back to what you was doing. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. Like little Kim. Like, yeah, like, uh, okay. Uh, what am I going to do today? <laughs> I think that is so important and such beautiful 
power that you talk about, especially when you talk about you. facing your shadows, right? Mm-hmm. And these power talks, we get into our shadows. We talk about how where we've come and how we've seen the world, right? Mm-hmm. And healing from it. And that's something that I think, if anything, that I want people to walk away with every year that we do Power Talks in February is to walk away with the fact that Black and Brown... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. You're not going to just skate past that. Like, that's not... Say that again. Sorry. Say that. What? What was that? Every year. That so how long have we been doing this? Every year. Like, it's been three years of hosting these Power Talks. And because Jose got me one time, I was like, listen, it's real. And I was like, sure, I, I can talk. Let's do it. Um, and Shout out to Jose. Jose was like, you can do it, Sabrina. I was like, Jose, okay. And right. I was like, cool. The first year, last year, I told him I was in London and I was doing these power talks. And my host would be like, Sabrina, it is 3 a.m. <laughs> Why are you screaming? I said, it's because my girl here doing the poetry and I was just getting, I'm sorry, I apologize. But you know, <laughs> but it's also the, the notion of it that where I feel powerful mm-hmm. is that no matter what, because I've done the work, like you talked about the shadow work, the grounded work, right? To figure out how to get grounded. I can maneuver into these conversations and meet these most amazing people 